tough times, the reality of life makes it harder except what the future's holding for all of us. Higher force calling us, unexpected visits to the core of a tragedy pain has befallen us. And as we get in older, you quickly realize that you have to be stronger than you ever been. Lifespan has to be longer. Too many people taking life for granted. Too much negativity. Good morning, Neverland. So check it out. We're going to come to you with a wrestling, well, WrestleMania. I was going to say a wrestling review already chopping shit up and fucking it up. Uh, it's what I do. I don't care. I say what I want. I do what I want. It's how I get down. We're going to have a cool show. We're going to go over WrestleMania day one. Uh, I, you know what? I have my normal cast of guys here. And right before we were doing this, one of the guys that we bring in decided that he's against what our protocol is. He's against what we do. He wants to be a baby face for some reason. And um, I'm anti-face. I actually got something recently that said, why are you guys so into, you know, the heels and everything else? First off, our name is fucking Heel Team 6. It's the way we get down. It's not face Team 6. It's not we love good guys. We don't get down like that. So for him to come in and say, well, I'm going to be the voice of reason. I'm going to be the good guy. Well, I hope you're in for a long show, Mr. Good Guy. Mr. Caius Wolf, how are you, sir? I am great, Chef. I am going to be the voice in this situation because the baby faces are the reason y'all come and watch the matches. The heels just fuck it up. That's all it does. I mean, why don't you like the baby face? Look at all the great baby faces. There's there's great baby faces that are cool, especially nowadays. There, there's only really one, though, and he's in Japan. But still, it counts. It counts for something. And this is the type of shit we had to deal with prior to hitting record. So when he likes a good guy or he says something crazy, I'm cutting shit off. I'm going ham. As a matter of fact, Crooked, Crooked, what do you have for me? You live a heel life. What do you have for me, brother? Well, like, I'm, I'm just dumbfounded that we put a fucking person who loves faces on our podcast for God only fucking knows. But it's all right. I'm going to try and be nice, but we already know it's not going to fucking happen. But I can't wait for a one discussion we're going to get into because... This shit's going to get fucking amped, and I cannot wait to fucking start ripping a motherfucker from stomach open and eating the fucking insides. That's what I'm talking about. You see, this is the energy I like. Um, before I go into Mr. Drake Adams, who I think has a little issue with uh, word life, Mr. Thugonomics, which I'm not going to go into. I just wanted to get a little plug in there for the for the, the superstar John Cena that no one likes here, but I'm going to throw his name out there because that's what I I knew. it. I seen it coming. That's what I – listen, I try to tell these guys. We do shit like this. Boss, what do you got for us, Drake Adams? Nothing much, man. Ready to run this shit. Ready to get into it and ready to slap this face full around. Just listen to this vibe right now. It's amazing. It's it's what I like. It's what I, I, I fucking feed off of this shit. So I'm going to take a step back on this podcast. I'm not going to host it. I'm going to enjoy the show. I'm going to talk some shit when my time comes up. Uh, the boss of bosses, he's going to talk. He's going to host it. He's going to go over WrestleMania day one, day two. So take it over, Mr. Drake Adams. Thank you, Chef, for that beautiful intro. Uh, yeah, we're going to talk about, and I'm, I'm going to call it Monday Night Raw Parts 1 and 2, because that's what this show felt like to me. So uh, let's talk about Raw Part 1. Uh, day 1, we had, let me see if I can get that card back up. I had it pulled up over here. Of course I can't. We had uh, we had some interesting <laughs> matches. <laughs> let's stall a little bit while we look over for it. So I hope I we can it. edit this part out, motherfucker. You're so supposed to be the... You're supposed to be the boss, and you don't have fucking the game plan put together. Oh my gosh, I can't, I can't with hey, you. And you're hey, supposed to be the fucking I boss. Ain't I ain't, at least I ain't rude for them baby faces. All right. That's hey, a good point. Hey, hey, baby faces won at WrestleMania. I don't want to hear it from y'all. And this is yeah, exactly was, why WrestleMania is out there. Exactly. This is why we call it <laughs> fucking Monday Night Raw. 
part one and two, apparently. <laughs> it was supposed to be, it's the best WrestleMania in the last five years. So I don't want to hear what anyone has to say about all that. You know, oh. it's whatever. It's the best WrestleMania. It was feel good, man. Hey, feel chef, good moment. Chef, 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 you know where this fool lives? I need to send him a drug test. Bro, like, when he said that, I was like, like, is it like open your door? Is Ashton Kutcher around? Are we being punked right now? Like, what the fuck was that? I'm I mean, sitting outside, man. There ain't nothing around. <laughs> oh, oh shit! But um, do you want to go over the uh, titles? The, the titles. I think we should do that for day one. Has well, it lo- do a on the card real quick? Kickoff show with no, Cesaro and Gulak. title just uh women match starting the show off we going down to bliss and cross then we have corbin and elias elias did defeat corbin uh raw women's championship match we had becky lynch uh beating Shayna baszler the ic match Sami Zayn took down daniel bryan uh smackdown tag match we had a only three people involved, which was a really kind of odd thing to do. But John Morrison retained the titles for uh, Hey, Hey, Ho, Ho, Miz and Morrison. Uh, taking over uh, on a Kofi Kingston and was it Jimmy Uso? Yeah. Then we had the 24-7 championship match. We're not even going to bother with that bullshit. Uh, Kevin Owens beat Seth Rollins. The Universal Championship match. Goldberg lost to Braun Strowman. And then the Boneyard match, uh, Taker and Styles Taker, of course, going over. So let's talk about some of those matches here. What did y'all think about the title changes, the title matches? Uh, let's kick it off with our uh, our resident baby face, and then we can let the boys have at it. Okay, so, um, so I only caught the tail end of the women's tag, t- tag team title match. Um, I agree with it. Bliss and Cross are the only team besides the Kabuki Warriors. That's really a team, in a sense. Um, the Kabuki Warriors haven't done anything for the, with the tag belts, really, except get beat up by Becky Lynch for the last few months. So I'm not surprised they lost because I guess they were getting stale. I don't know. Or they just threw it in just so they could have, oh, we can have them be two-time tag team champions for Bliss and Cross. Um, didn't agree with the women's title match. Yes, I'm going against protocol. I know I'm the baby face, but I did not agree. Um, you make Shayna Baszler wipe out the whole women's division and have her lose with a really stupid finish where she just rolled over. Come on. Like, Baszler was a monster. Baszler should have went over. I get that Becky's their number one selling, like, person or whatever. That's why she's champion for so long. And, and she's one of the most popular female wrestlers, if not wrestlers in the company. But come on, you built Shayna for this and have her get lost because of a roll up that kills momentum and it's kind of stupid. Um, I agree with Zayn retaining over Brian because Zayn's been champion for what a month and he's going to drop it already. I thought, man, shit, they're going to make him transitional. But then when he hit the Haluva kick, I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> That's fine. Sami Zayn wins. And I don't really think Daniel Bryan's a baby face. I think he's more of a heel the way he's acting. Um, WWE title match or universal or I don't know. Yeah, we won the goal the Goldberg match. I knew Goldberg was gonna lose. It was obvious. Um it, it was just very obvious. Braun deserves it. I mean it's late, but still Braun Strowman's champion. Good. And Boneyard match, probably the greatest WWE film since the condemned, if I could say anything. I thought it was great. It was the best way to do this type of match considering it was done on the fly and done not too i mean yeah it was cheesy but it was just not too it worked considering there was no crowd it worked um not a fan of the ladder match great match um again really weird finish and just didn't make sense kind of just weird i think it would have been better with a crowd and then kevin owens over seth rollins i thought that was great um, it's good for Kevin Owens because Kevin Owens is kind of just, he had this big face turn and then he's just kind of been here and he gets his big win over Seth Rollins and it establishes Owens is maybe a top contender. Hopefully as a, he's already a main eventer, but just brings him back up there now. 
rather than just squandering away and doing nothing. I think I covered all the matches. If not, let me know. But that's what I think. I thought good card, some predictable outcomes, some were meh, but it was a good card, I think, for night one. All right, Chris, Chris up, Smile, what you up. got on that? So, not so bad of a night. Um, probably better night of the two, in my opinion. Um, C- C- Cesaro beating Drew, pretty much whatever. That's it. That's why it's on the kickoff show, because nobody gives a fuck about it. Uh, the Kaduki Warriors that they lost to Alexa. <laughs> I, see, I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah, all right. They, they suck. In my opinion, I hate, I hate the fucking tag team. Um, I, I always have. You guys know that. Um, I know Kyrie Zane, her contract is coming up, um, and she's talking about wanting to leave WWE and explore other options. No, that does not mean she's going to fucking AEW fucking marks, all right? I already know people are going to be like, oh, yeah, she's leaving. She's going to go to AEW. Nah, she's she's showed interest in going back to Japan, where she pretty much originated from, and that's cool. She don't deserve to be on WWE. She sucks. Her her character is completely fucking asinine. I don't know why they have a Japanese pirate. I, I've never seen a Japanese pirate until her. But yeah, Yo, past pirate that, princess, bro. Like I said, fuck the pirate gimmick. And fuck the boss, apparently. <laughs> so, <laughs> going on to King Corbin and Elias, I don't understand why they're having fucking Corbin just eating shit at this point. Like, he's constantly losing. He's supposed to be your fucking king. He's 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 got a great fucking background. Like, he's, he's a great wrestler. He knows, what, like, how to fuck. And to see Elias who hasn't been on TV very much lately going over on Corbin. It just doesn't make sense. Plus ever since, even during the fucking, uh, King of the ring, they're having Corbin lose like crazy. Like he's on like a weird losing streak and then he'll get a one win thing here every once in a while. It's just doesn't make sense. Corbin's a great talent. Should be, should definitely win over on Elias. Um, I'm not even going to talk about the fucking Shayna Baszler and Becky Lynch match. That can, eat a dick um Sami Zayn Daniel Bryan never been really a fan of Daniel Bryan um Sami Zayn I guess it was a decent match CBS Sports that I'm reading off of it got a B grade but I didn't really watch that one I was uh probably taking a sh- I think I was taking a shit during this match so it's all right I came back to the tag team titles I came in about right after the beginning that was a good match, but I kept getting distracted by the fucking ceiling fan in the back. Um, as a kid... That's a big-ass fan. <laughs> as a kid, I know... I know a lot of us did this shit. When we were hanging out with our friends and shit, and we were wrestling, we always put the fucking titles on the fucking fan <laughs> since it would hold it, and hopefully not break the fucking uh, propeller of the fan and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I've done it once. I broke the fucking fan blade, so, you know, it's all right. So, I know, honestly, in my opinion, if you would have strapped those fucking tag team title belts up there, I would have fucking marked out and went, like, fucking ham for that shit. Like, you could have easily done some shit. (laughs) You could have easily done some shit with that. But, yeah, overall, a good match. Um, Yeah, yeah, ho-ho, whatever the fuck they want to say, good job. Um, a title we didn't talk about, the 24-7 title. Uh, Raleigh defeated R-Truth. But yeah, it was quick Why and short. Why should we care about that? <laughs> hey, man. Fuck you and your face shit. This is my time. <laughs> <Talk. laughs> Alright. Your time is now, sir. Your time is now. Fuck, Johnson. Do not get me started on that fucking washed up, non-needing having ass in the fucking WWE anymore. Wait, 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 wait. I'm telling you, when you say washed up, I want to hear how you talk about the last thing. So go ahead, brother. Oh, my God. All right. Hey, so that's night two. We don't worry about that right now. Okay, yeah. okay, my fault, my fault, my fault. <laughs> All right, so Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins, 
it was actually a good match. Um, I was kind of pissed off. I thought they were going to end it by disqualification. I was going to say, why would you put a fucking somewhat co-main event type match on a fucking DQ? But it was cool how they finished it with Owens pretty much saying, nah, that's not how the fuck we're going to end this shit. We're ending it pretty much on the way I want to end it. So cool to see that they didn't end it on the DQ because I would have just went, went ape shit on that fucking match. But overall, decent match. Goldberg Braun Strowman was only like four minutes. Um, totally fucking pointless. Uh, they're making this universal title dog shit again now that another has been had it. But thank God Braun's saving it. Hopefully. Hopefully they don't have him start squashing people because he beat uh, the old Oldberg piece of shit. And a great way to end the night was AJ versus Taker. Hate the outcome. I was hoping they put AJ Styles over. Um, overall, great somatic match. They did very well. Um, I thought they were going to end it on how fucking Taker was telling AJ, like, yo, you fought your ass off. Great job, kid. Like, so on and so forth. I thought they were just going to walk away. I was going to be like, well, that's a different way to fucking end it. I actually thought they were going to put a tag with AJ and uh, Taker, to be honest. I know you guys are probably going to think I'm fucking crazy, but fuck you guys. I don't care. Um, but all in all, it's probably the best match Taker's put on in quite a while. In my opinion, it's probably been the best match he's put on since probably about when he fought Triple H in the Hell in a Cell. Maybe I'll even push it back to when he fought fucking Edge back in WrestleMania 24, to be honest. That was a dope fight. Whatever that was a dope John match. Michaels? <laughs> that was a solid fight. I'd say his his, uh, his big one was when he faced uh, Triple H the first time before the whole end of the era and all that bullshit, though. What, what year was That's that? 7. What year was that? 2001? Yeah. So we're, 2001. Saying, uh, we're saying the last far, great man. match. We're saying the last great now the fucking one is that what we're saying right now? Oh, no, no, two thousand one uh, was saying Hollywood. 20, I'm saying like no. two thousand. It was like two thousand ten, two thousand twelve. So two thousand twelve yeah. was the last dope taker match. Yeah. Pretty much. There's long, no, there's a, there's a long pause. I'm asking you guys, what's the last dope taker match? Like, what's the last match that you? You know, this guy's uh, on drugs right now. So, if we're saying 2012, that's... Well, yeah, he has been injured for about... All Here goes the excuses. All right, as a matter of fact, I, I like what... I'm going to co-sign 99% of what Crooked said. I can go with everything he said, and that's fine, except for the Kaduki Warriors, because that's kind of fucked up, and I think it's hilarious, though. But, um... I happen to like Kyrie saying I think she's really talented, but let's not go crazy right now. I agree with everything he says. Alexa Bliss should be the champion of anything the fuck she wants because she's super fucking hot and she's dope in ring. So I'm a fucking I'll just say, you know what? It's one of the rare times I'll say I'm a fucking Mark or something. Alexa Bliss, she gets that. Um, fuck the entire. You know you have a what? We know you have an Alexa Bliss poster in your room. Continue. Oh, no, nigga. I'm married to a Puerto Rican. There's no women on my wall. I'll get fucking gutted. Um, <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, let's, let's not get about that one. Oh, shit. So, uh, so we'll go through the entire card. Blah, 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 blah. Everything that Crooked Smile said, I co-signed bang. So just rebuttal everything he says. Let's get down to the what I thought was a very interesting promo because it wasn't a wrestling match. What JB did... And I think I was talking with Drake yesterday, and uh, he's right. Uh, this just felt like a lesser version of the broken stuff that JB did with Impact. So I thought it was good. It was definitely entertaining. Why would you put over fucking AJ Styles, who's still super, well, not super young, but still the fucking man, still doing his thing. You don't put him over. Uh, you know, it, it, this shit made no sense to me because... Well, three, four fucking years ago, um, 
He put his boots in the fucking ring to sign like to signify he was done. Now, if you've never done that, I don't give a shit about this. I'm like, okay, cool. It's the Undertaker. He's doing this shit for a check because he ain't doing it for fans. Let's keep it a buck. So he sits there. He does his once a year thing, come out for mania, steal somebody's spot that has busted their ass all year round to steal, steal one of these dudes' spots because of his name. You don't even have a match. So if this is hold his on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Cut off right now. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, shit. Let's get Here it. we go. Let's get whoa, it. Whoa. Listen, listen, listen. No, this yeah, smile is okay. turning. I got a question. It's crooked. Who it's going straight now. Would you replace? You do know that allegedly that they had nothing for Styles and Taker. And then this was pitched by Taker to get Styles on Mania, right? You okay, but who's so, who the If you had to pick, if you had to take Taker out and you had to put AJ Styles in there, who that is didn't have a match on the card would you put in against AJ Styles? Anybody. Anybody. Anybody that's been doing their thing. I would take anybody on that card. Listen, I would would put Zack Ryder. Any single person. I'd put fucking Zack Ryder in there too. Why? I'm saying Cedric Alexander. Have you not seen how Cedric Alexander and AJ work? Bro, that's a fucking masterpiece in the ring. I would put anybody that you see once a month, twice a month, that you see on a regular basis. I have a Eve with, with bringing open to come around once in a blue that you put on. I say this shit on every podcast. This is not something new. You're stealing a spot from somebody because you have a name. Did this motherfucker just say TJP? No. <laughs> oh, oh. I thought he said TJP. So, uh, honestly, you're taking somebody's spot. The dude's been washed up. He's been fucking washed up. It was a decent promo. It just, that's what it was. It was a fucking promo. But you're, you're stealing a spot from somebody because of your name. And the fact that you sit there and say, well, who would you put over? Well, that's not my job. I don't get paid for creative. That means... If you have nothing for fucking AJ Styles, who's one of the hottest fucking acts you have, then that shows how bad your creative team is. That really comes down to it. What's up, baby? Chef, just to put a a date on that last good taker match, it was the no-holds-barred match he had at Mania 27 against Triple H in 2011. So we're looking nine years ago was the last time this guy did something where people enjoyed it. The Hell in the Cell match was was good. Oh it was my god! Not against Shane, the one against Triple H, the second one. They had the no holds Compared barred. Against the no holds barred snow. match. This is Compared ridiculous. The no holds said. barred, and what was better? No holds barred. No question. His, his last dope match was fucking nine years ago. I mean, this is nuts. I mean, I'm not trying to just shit on Undertaker. I've never been a fan. Do I respect his legacy? One hundred percent. 100% can't take nothing away from his longevity, can't take it away from his, you know, his his gimmick. I mean, that shit is legendary. But for him to do what he does, this shit is ass. It's it's a fucking promo. It's not even a fucking match. And then you hey, bury Chef, fucking- I got a I got a idea for a future show. What's up? We got to do a show, The Case Against Taker. Let's do it. Let's do it. Cause I listen. I love oh, being wrong. For that. I love being wrong. I, I can accept being wrong. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I, I we're definitely gonna do that. We're, Cause I got a lot of shit lined up with a lot of people that we're doing a lot of content with. It. That shit is a dope idea. So, but when you really look at it, what did this really do for fucking AJ Styles, who is your Monday Night Raw, and you know every week who's part of the OC group? What did this do for him? Fucking nothing. It did nothing for him when he stuck his fucking hand through the dirt. So come on, man. Like, you didn't even put over the guy you're supposed to put over. Yeah, this guy drove his bike away. Okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? It was a dead AJ Styles doesn't need The Undertaker. And AJ Styles, and St- AJ, The Undertaker doesn't need AJ Styles. It was a clash of two guys who are considered megastars in this industry. How going is against each other. How is he a megastar when he hasn't done nothing in nine years? He's still a draw. He's still one of the top thing, sellers and shit like that. People okay. buy Taker shit. People watch Taker shit. Hold on. Hold on. Hold now on. So he's that much of a, basically if he's, pulling back the curtain. If he's that much of a draw, me? if he's that much of a draw, 
Bowl, his last thing was seen in front of nobody. You can't help with the world the way it is right now. You don't think that they would have had a match match? That wasn't even, even going to be in the ring. The last thing he's ever done wasn't even in a ring. This, this Boneyard thing was not just switched up because, oh, shit, this COVID-19 shit. Nah, that's not even it. The last thing, because let's face it, next year, they'll throw another $2 million at him, and he's going to jump on it. So all these little send-offs that they're blessing him with, that fans like yourself should be eaten up, at what point does it get enough of, wow, we got like 19 fucking send-offs. He's the fucking Brett Favre of fucking wrestling. You could make the case, okay. You want to talk about that? How many times has Terry Funk retired? Like sixty. Well, um, we're not talking about Terry Funk. Hogan. How many times has Hogan retired? You want to yeah, talk about? Oh, oh, Hogan, 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 about Hogan, so about Hogan or Funk? Hogan. Hogan is the fucking name of wrestling. He's kind of like the fucking Babe Ruth, Michael Jordan. Hogan can do what the fuck he wants. Also, talk racist. Whoa, 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 yeah. whoa! Take, take it easy. So, regardless, though, is. Undertaker is nowhere near Hulk Hogan's name. There's Hulk Hogan, and then there's fucking wrestling. I'm not even a Hulk Hogan fan, but let's just keep it a buck. There's Hulk Hogan, and then there's wrestling. Everybody else plays underneath him because Hulk Hogan is that name. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I don't so know. you're Someone... saying Hogan from Austin is what you're telling me, considering Austin outdrew him. For many, outdrew him. Are you saying that Stone Cold Steve money. Austin is more Stone Cold Steve Austin is a bigger wrestling name than Hulk Hogan? Uh, in my opinion, yes. Hold on, I need one of these. Your opinion is wrong. Yeah, yeah, that's insane to me. You can't. Wait, wait, what? Wait, did wait? Did I just hear that Stone Cold Steve Austin is a bigger name than Hulk Hogan? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, Austin. I'm saying it for this. Austin outdrew him in terms of money and everything else. And that's yeah, how you determine guys, whether you're not in wrestling. If guys, you make, how do you make money in wrestling? You draw. It's, different, you it's a different era. It's a different era from different when Hulk Hogan was doing it. Decades apart. Yeah, Hulk Hogan was doing this in the 90s with no kind of fucking social media. If Hulk Hogan no, was, was the, awesome. the, Hulk, Austin went into the 2000s. He took off in like 97, 98 when he yeah, beat Sean for the title. Like, Hogan was, let me tell you something, brother. Dude, Hogan was doing this in the 80s before there were fucking cell phones, my dude. Yeah, least, but least it 90s. also helped that, the, that there was also TV. <laughs> TV was a beautiful thing and the thing when MTV took off and the rock and wrestling connection how, I, my thing is how do we get from Taker talking about the Boneyard match to talk about how Hogan and Austin who's the better between the two that's why when Austin's music hits that place fucking erupts right that place goes and, nuts and, and then you still see Hulk the Hogan, the for Hogan. The, I was there in Orlando in the, when he showed up let, let's be honest we only go fucking ape shit because we hear the fucking glass break. That's pretty much the only reason we fucking go hype. <laughs> you associate, listen, you Stone associate Cold. the glass breaking with Stone Cold Steve Austin, correct? Listen, and listen. that is, he was a badass motherfucker. And if he had never had his his knees gave out, he probably would have been. There probably would have been no such thing as Brock or John. Yeah, you Triple H for that. You understand that um, he also started as stunning Steve Austin, right? Yes, and Hogan started as Thunderlips. Yeah, yeah, but Hulk Hogan is also the, he's the fucking immortal, literally. And see, this it, the, the bad part is you're making it sound like, you're making me sound like I'm a, a Hulk Hogan mark or a super fanboy, which is not even the thing. Th there's no way you could put anybody in the same name as fucking Hulk Hogan, like, all right, uh, and just quick, and, and this, listen, I don't care, because this is what we do. We go off topic all the time. I'm not a Chicago Bulls fan. I grew up a Sean Kemp fan. But if I like say my guy is either Allen Iverson or, or Vince Carter, none of them motherfuckers is on Michael Jordan's level because there's Michael Jordan and then there's basketball. You know what I mean? Like as good as LeBron might be, he'll never be Mike. As good as Stone Cold, as good as The Undertaker, as good as AJ Styles, as good as 
uh, Kevin Owens and every fucking body else, they'll never be Hulk Hogan. It's just the way it is. He's the fucking Hulk baby. Ball until they release his neck. I can't believe this right now. This is insane. So as a matter of fact, <laughs> listen, we got to go back onto some kind of uh, good level. Yo, Mr. Drake Gattis, we, we, we haven't even heard your point of view yet. I mean, I'm on board with most of what y'all have said now that we're getting back to <laughs> topic. <laughs> um, let me roll back because I already forgot where we was. Uh, yeah, Gulak Cesaro, who gives a fuck? That, Nobody cares about that match. Hey, Cesaro's uh, a great wrestler. He makes yeah, anyways on the made, pre-show. The match made no sense and didn't matter towards anything, so fuck it. Uh, Kabuki Warriors and Bliss and Cross. Uh, Bliss and Cross are not a tag team. I don't care what anybody says. They're two singles competitors that were thrown together. They're not a tag team. Uh, the people They're who should friend. be holding that belt, the people who should be holding that belt, and I will say this till the day I die, the Iconics. The Iconics, where are my Billy Kay and Peyton Royce? They need to be holding that strap and defending it all over the world. One uh, with Corbin Sean's and Elias. Down. Nobody gives a fuck about that match either. Made no point. Made no sense. Uh, Gronk's decision, according to the WWE, and it shows throughout the entire match that it was fucking horrible. Uh... Lynch Baszler, of course, Baszler should have won that match. Uh, I am entirely over Becky Lynch. I can't stand her at this point. Uh, the man needs to go away for a year or something. Just get rid of it. I'm tired. Uh, Zane Bryan, yeah, Zane needs to hold that belt for longer. He just got it. To drop it to Bryan immediately would make no sense. Um, well, Dave, not a huge Brian. fan of Bryan, but Bryan is is a great talent. Uh, Zayn is also awesome. That match should have been a lot better than it was. It should have been great. Well, can Shed I chime music. in on that match real quick? You should have told him no. You should have been like, you had your opportunity to talk about that stupid match. One thing. like That match just seemed like... It seemed Brian beat the shit out of like Zayn the whole match. That's what I said. It felt like a squash, but then Zayn won, and I was like, okay, cool, but that's why. Fuck Daniel exactly Bryan. Exactly why I said it made no fucking sense. Uh, SmackDown Tag Team Championship. Uh, only including you know one guy from each team made no sense to me because, oh, we got to do the social distancing and everything. And then in night two, they do a fatal five-way. Like, hello? Uh, Morrison retaining. Great. Um, not a fan of the New Day. Uh, ben... And throw them. It's the number one announcer. <laughs> As a match, terrible. A backstage brawl with was great. The rails. Oh, go ahead. 
fucking match closely. When Taker drove his fucking arm through that fucking window, was I the only one who no noticed like his fucking arm was like bulging, like some shit got fucking stuck in it or some shit? Yeah, he, he legit got hurt. Place. He got cut open on the second one, and they kept yeah. it in. That yeah, I know, shocked. but like, it's like somebody the guy's like, nine thousand. He's 9,000 years old. What do you think happens to your body when you try to punch through glass and, and shit like that? Like, you know, he's all these people. No, no, no. I know, like, Bro, you're Goldberg gonna, broke you're his gonna, hand. Goldberg's turned to dust. <laughs> We're not talking about Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like, for real, though. Like, he, I know you're going to cut your arm going through a fucking glass, but his fucking arm was, like, bulging to where, like, something was, like, got lodged in that motherfucker. At first, I thought it was the fucking pipe that he had or whatever it was. I thought he, like, missed, like, swung it. That bitch ricocheted and, like, fucking stuck inside of his arm. Like, the bulge was, like, that fucking big. Yeah, it was not guys, the best-looking spot. I don't know if you yeah. guys noticed this about the Boneyard match with the shovel. They said it was a shovel, but it was just a stick. Did anybody pick that up, or is that with just me? I think they used the shovel, or they pre like when it was pre-recorded. Because if you look towards the end, the fucking head of the shovel is actually inside the fucking grave, like above AJ's head, probably to the right. Like you could see the actual shovel head in there. So I think they pre like did a couple of recordings, and the fucking shovel head came off, and they lost it. That's night what I was thinking. I thought like when he swung. What do we got for night two, Mister Drake Adams? Enough of this fucking boneyard bullshit. Fuck you, chef. All right, I'm going to start it off for this one since y'all going ham, and I, I'll just chime in when I need to. But uh, kickoff show, we had Morgan, Liv Morgan and Natalia, the beautiful Liv Morgan and the beautiful Natalia. Uh, I would say it was a solid match. It was a decent match for a kickoff. Um, definitely better than the Cesaro Gulak match, but uh, didn't, again, didn't make any sense. There's no storylining being told between them. Uh, actually, my, my wife brought up a good point here. It should have been like Liv Morgan versus Ruby Riot, but with all this no shit going on, who knows what where? Your wife uh... says. <laughs> uh, well, well, I do, wife, sir. And uh, it, if if you want to go on with that point, you're just gonna have to take TJP's dick out of your mouth before you keep talking. <laughs> but you're on, uh, you're on this you podcast thinking somebody gives a fuck what your wife says. We don't even know. You. Your wife, motherfucker. Hey, hey, I just brought up a point she's made that I agreed with. That's all it was, all right? It doesn't so matter what she Sit back thinks. down on TJ's lap and ask him what more that you want more. <laughs> all right? Uh, uh, NXT Women's Championship match. We got Rhea Ripley losing to Charlotte Flair. I would say that this was match of the night. Um, Starting the show off and killing it right off the bat. Cannot stand that Charlotte Flair won, but... Uh, I believe we talked about this the other day. Uh, Charlotte Flair wouldn't be where she is if it wasn't for her, for her last name. She isn't all that talented compared to the rest of the women's division. And her dropping back down to NXT to hold their belt totally defames the belt and Rhea Ripley. Because she's been, I mean, Ripley's been hot as shit coming out here. And then just to drop the belt made no sense. But all in all, together. Together, it was a great match. Uh, Alistair Black and Bobby Lashley. I'm a huge Alistair Black fan, but again, this match made no freaking sense, so we'll skip over that. Otis and Ziggler, again, big Ziggler fan, but this match, again, just a storyline ender. Didn't fucking matter. Good story, though. Uh, Edge and Orton. Another solid match, but definitely took way too long. Um, Again, big Edge fan here. Glad he won. It was that match should have been about ten minutes shorter. Uh, raw tag match: Street Profits versus Garza and Austin Theory. Uh, this match shouldn't have been on the card. When you lost Andrade there, it, you should have just pulled the whole match. Replacing with Austin Theory, who, in terms of your average WWE watcher, is a nobody. It really didn't make much sense. Um, those of us who actually watch wrestling know who Austin Theory is, know his uh, uh, career coming up through the indies and everything, and respect what he's done. He's been a solid competitor. but And then Garza's amazing coming out of AAA and his, the work he's done with Impact. It should, yeah, I mean, it could have been a great match, but we're talking about the WWE here, and they don't give a fuck about what you do before you get there. 
Uh, SmackDown women's match, Bailey retaining in the five-way elimination bullshit match. Um, don't care. Really don't care. And uh, Cena versus The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, in the Firefly Funhouse promo. Because, again, that was another one that was not a match. It was awesome, but it was not a match. And then we're going to end the show off with Bork, Lazar, Brock Lesnar, and uh, Drew McIntyre. Kind of a shit match, too. Um, Very quick, if this is your big blow-off, this is your big you know feud ender here, and you're going to have the title being defended, why are you going to do such a short match for that? Like, that's it's... I feel like WWE really missed the mark with this show in a whole. Um, that's why I'm calling it Monday Night Raw Parts 1 and 2, because this was not a Mania quality card. Uh, let's throw it over to our resident face, and then we can have, have the two uh, heels kick on them. Oh, Lord. Like I'm afraid of Chef. Um, okay, so... Uh, all right, so... I saw only a few of these matches because like i just didn't really care i'm good glad for Liv morgan she gets airtime finally uh she she gets a win and she's working with someone who can make her look great natty so it was good uh good good match better than the other one you're right about the gulak um the one after that what was the one what was the starter for my two again Sorry, guys. I'm a little... Wow, hard. look at this rookie over here. Already fucking it up. Hey. NXT match. Oh, Ripley and uh, Charlotte. Good match. Uh, just... If the roles were reverse, it would make more sense. Like, if it was Rhea Ripley challenging Charlotte for the title, and then Ripley going over Charlotte to establish Ripley as, like, the next big thing. But they decided, hey, we want to put star power on NXT, so they have Charlotte win the belt on NXT because they're afraid of they want to try to win the Wednesday Night Wars because NXT's ratings are going down, so they bring Charlotte over there. Whatever. But good match. Didn't agree with the outcome. Uh, he says, wait, what? It's only the truth. Um after that, uh, Raw, tag, Raw Tag Team title match. Didn't care for it, so I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, Otis and Ziggler, good payoff to a story. I thought they were going to pull the whole Jericho Christian thing where, like, uh, Mandy turns Otis and, like, kisses thing, and they were going to do all that. And I'd be like, that's cool, but it was good payoff. They wanted a feel-good moment for Otis. Big guy, big fat guy gets the, the hot, sexy, gorgeous woman named Mandy Rose. She's amazingly that's beautiful. Otis, look, that's because Otis is a pimp. That's why. I know, I know, I know. Um, uh, well, uh, Firehouse of Fun match. Great promo. I agree it was a promo. I didn't need to be... I don't know why they're considering it a match. They shouldn't call these things matches. They should just call them promos or whatever. I don't know. But it was good. I was glad Bray Wyatt won. I thought John Cena was going to go in there and be Super Cena and be like, no, you're not. I'm not putting you over. But I guess he learned his lesson. Um, Bray Wyatt gets oh, so you thought, innocent. You thought he was going to do what Undertaker's been doing to talents for like the last nine years? Oh, gosh, but you got to remember they faced before. They they faced before and John Cena should have put over Bray Wyatt a few years ago, but he didn't. He should have, but he didn't because he's an idiot. But now he doesn't care anymore, and he's like, fuck it, I gotta get back. Because um, I'm going to Hollywood and making more money. So, uh, and then world title match. Match quality, not great, because it didn't need to be. Because you already knew they were going to come out, and Brock was going to hit him with like 80. Brock, though. It's okay that it's shitty. It's, okay that it's, shitty. it's never okay if it's shitty. It, it, yeah, listen, but... Listen, he's 
This he's is saying, pro wrestling entertainment. Listen, he's saying it's okay to be shitty as the main event at WrestleMania that he's trying to give it a pass. It makes no sense. You're going to tell Brock? You're going to tell Brock you have to go out there and wrestle 12 minutes? He's going to look I, at you and say, if what? I'm paying him that much listen, money, listen. you bet your ass I'm going to tell him. I've, I've said and this before. He's going to throw the belt at you and not show up, and then what are you going to do? <laughs> listen, That's I'm going to tell you I now. Listen, listen, listen. People get all crazy about size. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I would slap the shit out that nigga, and if he fucking breaks me in half, he breaks me in half. But I'm going to slap that nigga with no respect. I'm going to... But just pap, take... Listen, that's a big dude, and yeah, he does know how to fight for real. But yeah. I know how to fight too. So I'm going to still slap the shit. I don't care what size you are. First off, I'm your boss. I'm paying you. So you're going to go out there and give me the best quality match that you could give me because I'm paying you as a superstar. And especially at WrestleMania, the, the, the pinnacle of wrestling every year. Every year is supposed to be Mania weekend. For you to put that type of bullshit on is whack. Well, they didn't have a crap. If he would have had a crowd, I think the match would have been longer. But I bet you Brock went in there and said, I'm going to put him over, but we're not having a long match. Because Brock probably didn't want to be there because of the whole everything like that. That's what I'm getting from it. Because no, I think if they had Brock a crowd, it would have made a lot of earlier on the card. Brock bitched that he wasn't earlier on the card when they were filming before the uh, – obviously it was pre-taped. So they were, he bitched because he wasn't filmed and out of there first. That's the because only he wanted thing to be he out of there. He's the champ. Film him oh, and okay. get him out. And he, you can and edit it. Who's the employer? Who's the employer? What WWE, Vince McMahon. Exactly. Technically. Guess what happens then? You do what you're told, just like any other job. If I'm hiring you to come work for me and you tell me you want it a certain way and I don't want it that way, guess what? It's my fucking way because I'm paying you. Yeah, it's, but you know how Vince is. He kicks. He if he doesn't want to lose. They don't want to. Brock and walks That's out. Guess it. what? Brock vacated the belt, and I'm letting everybody on Monday Night Raw know that Brock vacated the belt like the bitch he is. Jesus. Bang, bang! Damn, we done. We good? Yeah, and that what was I forgot more. Is you that my mission up. one? You better hurry up because shots are coming fired. So you better put on that bulletproof <laughs> vest. I got it on already. I even got a helmet too. Um, up what did I miss? Bar. Anything else around my like two round two night two? I'm just happy for Drew. That's all, and I'm I'm just happy for him because he deserves it. I mean, and also, too, not to think, one more thing, you want to talk about size, Drew made Brock look, like, so tiny compared, I forgot how big Drew was, like, I've seen, like, him, I I saw him in person once a few years ago, but, like, watching him on TV, you don't realize how big he actually is, and then you, I watched, like, the stare down between him and Brock, and I'm just like, damn, like, Brock looks tiny compared to Mr. Man, Mad Scott. I was man. there when he debuted with Impact. That man jumped the barricade next to me. I'm 5'10", so I'm not a short dude. I'm average height, and I felt like I was looking up at Godzilla as he came by. You're just like, holy shit. <laughs> um, who, but uh, did I miss it? Besides, you did not miss one match. Crooked, please save okay. this show because this bullshit that we just heard, I can't believe some of the nonsense that he just poured out. So I need you to save this because I'm only touching on three things. All right. So let me, yeah. uh, cock, let me cock the gun and get ready to start shooting the fire. All right. So I can agree with you on Liv Morgan and Natalia. It was all right. I got, Kevin. I, feel that she, I, I feel that they could have used Liv a little bit more, but obviously they wanted a chain match. It's a kickoff show, whatever. Cool. We'll go past that. Now I'm about to fucking, Pour gasoline on your fucking fire because you're saying Rhea Ripley is not a hot talent right now and that she shouldn't have, like, no. If no, it wasn't no, for. No, she is a hot talent. But you said if the roles were reversed, that you would make her meaning, bigger. Meaning if Charlotte was champion going into WrestleMania rather than have Rhea champion and have Charlotte challenging her, it would have, I think, made more sense. To have because Ripley, she's so hot. The hot, this is a hot baby face going in, taking down the big heel champ. That's what I meant. All right, but still, still, Charlotte only won that fucking match because of her last name, and they're trying to catch her up to her fucking daughter. 
his or his uh have his daughter catch up to his record of being a fucking sixteen time champion. No one gives a fuck about no one's giving a fuck about Charlotte Flair for the past probably two years. You're shoving her down our fucking throats. You have a fucking young upcoming fucking talent from fucking Australia who busted her ass. I've I've seen her journey and everything else like that. I can't, I'm not supposed to say this, but I'm actually friends with fucking Rhea Ripley and bro the shit she puts into work, she should be fucking on the main fucking roster at this point. Like literally I can even show you the messages that I've showed her is that she should fucking SmackDown, fucking destroying that fucking roster of females right now. But past that, overall good match, but fucking can't believe you put Flair over Ripley, a fucking up-and-coming great talent. I'm not even going to talk about Lashley and fucking Aleister Black, because no one gives a fuck. Otis and Ziggler, same. Fucking fine-ass female coming out. Give Mandy Rose credit, she's fucking fire. So obviously people are going to pay attention to it. Otis is a lucky man for getting to touch those beautiful fucking lips. All right, so we're going to go to Edge and Orton. Honestly, great match. I said this to uh, Chef the other day. It was a great match. It just went on too long. It shouldn't have went on too long. They stalled a lot towards the end because it seemed like they were trying to, like, kill time. Um, overall, it was a great match, but it should have been a lot shorter, just like Drake Adams said. Um, I'm not even going to talk about the Street Profits match. Fuck that. Um, Bailey, I could have at least seen Lacey Evans winning the title or having them break up Sasha and uh, Bailey. Either way, it was it's still a decent match. I'll give them that. Um, Fiend and John Cena. It was a great promo, like Drake Adams said. The best part of it was the fucking Vince McMahon puppet that they haven't showed in a while. Um, I believe Vince was actually against that puppet for a while because obviously it's kind of making fun of him. Shit was fucking funny going at John Cena, pretty much telling him, oh, where's your fucking ruthless aggression, blah, blah, blah. And actually, it was pretty fucking funny to see them using Vince pretty much as a surefire way to start up John Cena. And real quick, I know, you. what'd you say about Brock Lesnar and Drew McIntyre again? The stare down or the match? The match. What? What? No, you said. Oh no, no, I got what you said. You said Brock Lesnar is the champion, so he can get uh, recorded early and leave early. That's not how it works in this business, kid. So first, you're the fucking champion. You're supposed to be the face of this company. There is no fucking way in hell I am letting you record early and leave early when you're supposed to be the fucking face. Like, you're telling me, so if you go to an autograph event, you can do, what, five autographs, and then, oh, you're, I'm getting tired, so you're going to fucking leave? Fuck no, I'm going to strip Rocky. you of that title. I, I would strip you of that title fucking immediately. I don't give a fuck if you didn't lose it in a match. You're fucking done. I'm putting you on suspension. Get your ass right. Um, Brock, I don't give a fuck what his accolades are. You are fucking still nobody. Nobody is fucking over anybody in this company. Once you're on that roster, everybody's at a fucking evil, loving play of playing field. So Brock getting in an argument with the boss. I'm glad he also actually defend it. Brock doesn't get to call his shots. I don't give a fuck that he's been in the UFC, that he's done fucking college wrestling. He's still fucking nobody. He's got fucking two moves to his arsenal where he starts going on the ground and pound moves. Like, that's not a champion to me. Um, so fuck Brock Lesnar. I don't give a f I don't give a shit that you get mad that you want to leave early. I understand he does have a fucking stomach issue where he could quote unquote get coronavirus, whatever. But if you're that much worried about it, unbook yourself from the show. We'll put the fucking title as vacant, and we'll put two people who deserve to be in that fucking match. So you'd have Drew McIntyre versus another worthy opponent in that match. So. That's what I got to say about that. I don't care who you are. You're not going to fucking try and hold a show hostage because you're the champion and you think your fucking pay grade is above everybody else when honestly he shouldn't be getting the money he's getting paid. Just out of curiosity here, uh, Crooked, who would you say is uh, fitting of that spot across from McIntyre? <laughs> I 
already know what you guys are gonna want me to say, but I'm not gonna say his name. <laughs> oh no, I wasn't. I wasn't even trying to lead you. I was honestly curious. <laughs> was, was oh it. my bad. Yeah. My bad. I thought. I thought he was trying to lead you to say it. My fault. I, I thought. I thought he was gonna lead me to say it. Honestly. Um. Honestly. No, that's that's a a that's a if it wasn't for Fiend and having uh, Cena and everything. <laughs> Yeah, I would put TJP versus Drew McIntyre. No, I'm playing. So, in all honesty, I would have had Drew McIntyre go against probably, you guys are probably going to get on me for this one, somebody like a Ricochet or a fucking, if AJ wasn't fighting Taker, I'd put him in AJ. It, it just needs to be somebody, I'd have to look at the roster again because I don't know who's all in fucking uh, Raw at the moment. Um, I'd have to look at no, nah, fuck John Cena. <laughs> now, now you're trying to get me started, motherfucker. <laughs> All right, so is it is it my go? Am I, am I able to say my three little points? Sure, go ahead. As long as it ain't something crazy, like not saying crazy. Brock Lesnar can leave whenever the fuck he wants. Oh, no, 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 I'm not this guy. I, I, I don't believe in that bullshit. Um, I'm going to be my own order because I'm going to do things a little differently. I'm going to show... My man Drew, a lot of love because Drew is the fucking man. I like we all got to see him in Impact and it, hey, what it's, the fuck was that there, Chef? What the fuck was that? Dude, gotta go, my man Drew. Um, no, but on some real shit, like uh, when you get to see talents in person, you know you you start to like them because you're seeing it up close. And and I think he's up. He's an unbelievable talent. You know, like Drew is the fucking man. So uh, I'm glad he beat uh, this. You know, fuck it. I'm just gonna call him a terrorist because he held fucking WWE hostage and everything else. So he beat the terrorist Brock Lesnar. Um, as for Charlotte Flair, I'm glad you know Crooked fucking destroyed her the way he did because to devalue somebody like a Rhea Ripley who's been killing it for so long and uh, she's been through NXT UK, she's been through NXT, so. She has came over and had unbelievable matches left and right, left and right. And you're just building her and building her and building her. And then people are just behind her. And in one stupid night, you fucking have Charlotte Flair of all fucking people, the female John Cena, which I'm going to show him love in a minute. So it makes no sense that I'm doing that. But it's the female John Cena destroying a young talent again, which I'm completely against. And I thought it was absolutely fucking asinine to do that shit. But I don't have to go too crazy because, like I said, Crooked, you know, he dropped knowledge on you people. Knowledge that you should understand for years. Um, then we're going to go into the Firefly promo, which I super enjoyed. Probably more so because the NWO thing came up and I'm a super NWO fan. I grew up with it. I love the NWO. And I did have and one of those. Like, you're not a Hulk Hogan fan. I'm not a Hulk Hogan fan. I would admit that and I'm a Hollywood that- Hogan fan. I'm a Hollywood Hogan fan. Absolutely. Same person. It's not. It's completely different because when you look at gimmicks, it's a completely different character. And my favorite NWO guy wasn't even Hollywood. It was actually Kevin Nash. So uh, I, I I have guys. I even like Buff Bagwell more, more than Hollywood Hogan because I thought Buff was such a cool fucking character. But um, NWO, when that shit came out and you had uh, Bray Wyatt, who I think is the best fucking character in wrestling right now with the red and black and you had seen it with the black and white. And I thought it was such a dope tribute and everything else that all I'm going to say, and I'm going to leave it because I enjoyed this promo. I thought it was the best shit that I seen in all of mania. If John Cena fucking restarts the NWO, I'm going to go ham and I'm going to become this like John Cena fanboy out of left field. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to be doing the word lice and all this other bullshit and all these podcasts, pissing these guys off. You already and- do that shit. I know, well, I, it's just a fuck with you guys, but, like, if he comes NWO Cena, forget about it. How you doing? You know oh, what I mean? Like, you, you, you're a dick rider trying to call call me out saying I dick ride on TJ, on, but you dick ride on listen, Cena, right? Listen, I would be the crooked smile TJP to the chef fucking Cena. I'm admitting it. Is that fair? Nah, I feel TJP has more uh, talent base than Cena does. This fu- okay, before we, we, we go off too long, John Cena's name right now, if he retired, TJP at the end of his career won't even be able to scratch that dude's balls. He's not wrong. 
I like the silence from Crooked. You see that? That no. when you hear this, no. listen, when you see, when you hear this, yeah, that right there is great. Crooked, what you got for me, brother? And then we'll 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 do our plugs. What you got for me? So you're telling me all in all, John Cena is a better wrestler than TJP. I never said that. Yeah. I whoa, never said whoa, that. whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> so you telling me this rookie right here is telling me John Cena has a better move set than TJP. I think that's what he John said. John Cena is also that. 50 pounds heavier. He's taller. Oh, here, here we go. Here we go. He's going by weight and size. Here we go. Because weight it makes and size. Sense that's all that matters. Stand for it. John Cena can do that kind of stuff. He just doesn't need to. Why would he? Wait, you're telling wait, me, wait, you're wait, telling wait, me John Cena can be a high flyer and submission artist? When has, John John Cena have to do that? when has John Cena ever jumped over or did some kind of super aerialistic move or he became He's a super famous? When has Cena okay. ever done a suicide dive? Something I'd have to look that up. I'm, pre- I, I, I'm pretty sure he did one time. I don't do it. Fuck that shit. Um, but uh, he's done a, he's done high flying stuff. He used to do the famous or the top rope. He used to do it. That's how he broke his neck though. That one time. Are, are you Batista. fucking kidding me? Okay, but it looked like shit though. Like when he did it, it looked like when Billy Gunn does it, it looks official. When John Cena does it, it looks like a stinky leg drop, and he's just like like just falling. Boop. That's not that's not aerial. That's a leg drop off the top. A fame master what about looks that like beautiful, a beautiful uh, springboard stunner that he does. Oh my! Yeah, he did that. Listen, John Cena's got like <laughs> five, six fucking moves, okay? And here, fuck you guys, because I was sitting here fucking promoting John Cena and making him sound good, and then you guys pull this shit. Listen, John Cena's got five or six fucking moves, and two of them are okay. The rest look fucking pedestrian at best. But people love it. <laughs> I, I just, just want to for him. Hold on, hold on, news, bro. Hold, on, hold, on, hold the fuck no. up. I, I just want to hear this real quick. How are you telling me you think John Cena has a better fucking move set than TJP does? Cena has, like, like Chef said, he's got like five or six moves. TJP is a fucking technician wrestler, a fucking submission wrestler, a fucking high flyer. Like he's pretty much overall like he's got it down. And you're telling me John Cena, of all motherfucking people. Has a better move set, and that's not even comparing Cena to one of the better cruiserweights. Yes, I'm saying it because I got a question for you. When it's all said and done, who are you going to remember? John Cena? No, no, no. We're, we're not talking about Man. name. He's saying he's saying strictly in ring, not name value, not merchandise <laughs> sold, just in rings. Again. Generic I'm wrestler A sure. versus generic wrestler B. Just put right, move okay. sets on each. Hold on, one, one second. So you if rather we did, if we did you like generic without you. name? You wanted you to go TJP and John Cena without name. You're, you're telling me you would rather be remembered by your name in wrestling rather than the fuck fucking shit that you can do, where you can elevate somebody's game or you can make somebody look better. You're more worried about having your name brought out rather than showing what the fuck you can do. It's called legacy, man. The Greeks did it all the time. I'm a history that's manager. I can go off this that for is. all the time. <laughs> See, people I can spend hours talking money. to you about all that. See, the people are more worried about the money and the fucking fame rather than putting the fucking talent in the ring and busting their ass. That's the fucking problem with the fucking wrestling business nowadays, man. And I'm not afraid to fucking say it. Listen, 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 listen. If I was a great worker, and I know I'm not a great worker, I can do what I can because I have my own style. But if I had a name value and I'm wrestling a nobody and I'm older, yes, I w- and I knew they were better. Like, if instance, if John Cena and TJP had a match and John Cena just beats the shit out of him, what does that do for TJP? Nothing. But if TJP has a great match and gets to show all his stuff that he can do and out-wrestle John... And then TJP goes. Listen, listen, right, so guys. I think this, I think from that one. Huh? Go ahead, Crooked. Go ahead. We got to end this because this is getting way out of control. With what we usually do. 
Look, I, I, so I say, you. say your piece, brother. Just real quick. This was the last thing I'm going to say. So I'm about to die. You're, you're telling me people are going to remember the names in the match? Or are you going to tell me that they're going to be like, oh, shit, remember what this person did in the ring? Like, that was, like, the coolest fucking shit ever. Like, I've never seen something like this. Or would you be like, oh, well, you know, that John Cena match, you know, because he's such a fucking name. Like, wow, look at that shit that he did. You're going to remember the moveset or you're going to remember the name? It goes both ways. You remember Hogan and Andre because Hogan and Andre was a big attraction, right? And two names. The match itself was not that great. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, but, but remember then that, you remember uh, that Orton Cena match where Cena did the uh, the uh, FU and the STF. Yeah, but you still remember Orton and Cena because it's two names because it and happened you could find about eight hundred times. Well, yeah, but then also too, you have. Did you see that match with? Uh, like, if you watch, I hate using it, but um, Okada Omega. You remember all the moves in that match. You're like, man, I remember they did all that shit and that cool ass sequence they did. But you don't really remember the, if you showed it to someone who's not familiar with Japanese wrestling, they would remember the moves. They wouldn't remember the wrestler. But if you look at other matches that have great name value that they still talk about to this day, they remember it for the name and the match, even though the match was shit. Well, like Hogan and Andre is the big you know example. What? You know what? We we went way too far away from Mania. So here's how I'm gonna end this, right? Is it is personally, me. personally me? Oh, I'm gonna sit there and when I watch a wrestling match, and just like female or male, I don't care how diesel they are, I don't care how fat they are, I don't care how sexy they are, I don't care how ugly she is. I want to be entertained by them telling a story in ring. So you better be able to perform in ring. I want your moves to be clean, I want you to be able to work a crowd, and all the things a professional wrestler is supposed to give you. As for names. I don't give a fuck what your name is. Just give me a dope fucking match. Because at the end of the day, as long as you're entertaining the fuck out of me, that's what I'm watching for. So, uh, Mr. Drake Adams, please take us out. Plug yourself. Then Crookie, plug yourself. Then Clyde, plug yourself. And then all I'm going to say is add Joker's Championship Wrestling on Instagram. And make sure you subscribe, like, and all this shit. I won't speak again. So, please, in that order, let yourselves out of here, guys. All right. Catch me on Instagram at DrakeAdams underscore JCW. That's where you can find me. And uh, stay safe out there, fellas. Go ahead, Crooked. All right, you can follow me on Instagram at CrookedSmile underscore HT6. And also you can catch a great phenomenal talent, upcomer Ty Emery, T-A-I underscore E-M-E-R-Y. Great MMA fighter, everything else like that. I just got plugger for the love. And you can catch me, the Tyrant Kairos Wolf. That is my Instagram handle. Um, if you want to see me upcoming and everybody stay safe, get through this pandemic, stay inside, stay healthy. I'm definitely going to end it with a go fuck yourself, everybody, because we're heels and we can't be good guys. But definitely on some real shit, please, like we all say, quarantine yourselves, keep everybody safe and all that good shit. We out of here.